and there is no darkness in me at all. But I got you in my hands. Matter of fact, I got you in my hedge. Matter of fact, my spirit is in you. Matter of fact, my son is in you. You don't know how clean you are. And that's why we let the devil trick us into doing something stupid. Because we don't recognize how clean he has made us. We don't recognize how sanctified we are. We don't recognize how perfect we are. We don't recognize none of that. No, brother, you think I'm perfect? Well, what did he say? I gave you apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the perfecting of the saints. For the working of the ministry. For the edifying of the body. I'm trying to get your eyes to open up. I'm not talking about these eyes. I'm talking about your inner man eyes. I want you to see where you are. You are not the same you that you used to be. You don't do what you used to do. You don't think like you used to think. You don't act like you used to act. You are going through a metamorphosis. And if you can see the change has taken place, then you're going to stop trying to do what you used to do. I don't want to ever hear from nobody in COY saying that's just me. That means you're still living. You haven't died yet. Hello? Because see, if you're saving your little life for something, you're going to lose your life for nothing. But if you give your life to him, your life is worth something then. Are y'all still with me? Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6. That's Hebrews chapter 6. Some people took this as an offense. Shaul wrote this. At least they supposed that Shaul wrote it because the writer of Hebrews have never been purely identified. So we give, I give the writing of Hebrews, Hebrews to brother Shaul because that sounds like him who wrote it. Verse number one, therefore, having left the word of the beginning of the Messiah, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward Elohim. Brothers, sisters, it's time to move on. He done already did what he had to do. Now it's up to us. That's the scary part. He is right there to help you. He's right there to strengthen you. He's right there to protect you. But it's up to you if you want to run this race. The scripture says he's our keeper. If you want to be kept, he'll keep you. He's our savior. If you want to be saved, he'll save you. But it's up to us. Everybody agree with that? Okay, it's up to us. I want to make it in me. I got to make it. Let us go on to perfection. Now, who's going to help us to get there? See, everybody in here who think you don't need nobody to help you, then tell me why Ephesians 4, 11 was written. And the scripture says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. He gave. He gave. Once again, he gave. Now, if he gave you something you don't need, you got a problem with that. He told the prophets to judge each other. He said, while the other one talking, you judge what he's saying. That means I got to listen when Brother Johnson is preaching. And if he says something wrong, I'm going to wait till he get through. And I'm going to talk to him later. Then it's going to be up to him to correct it before the people. That's what I did when they corrected me. 
When they corrected me, I said, I told the congregation, I said, stop, everybody stop. I made a mistake. I said something that I shouldn't have said. Now, what did you say, Pastor Wim? I said, Paul fell from his horse on the road to Damascus. And the man who told me that, he said, show me that in the book, please. I went to all three occasions that's written to find where he did that and find out it's not written at all. So we have to be mindful that we can be corrected. You don't know it like you think you know it. Matter of fact, I'm going to be honest with y'all. When I'm preaching and getting messages from him, he always showing me something I didn't know. That's why I get excited. I, sometimes I'd be up here trying to preach and crying. <laughs> I'm in the loop. <laughs> and I say, he told me, <laughs> he told me this. That's for me. <laughs> Ooh, I got excited. I just go to balling up here like a baby. <sighs> and people looking at me like, what's wrong with him? Yeah, well, if you don't know, don't worry about it. Maybe you didn't receive what I just received. Praise him. Where was I just now? Okay, let's go to Matthew, Yahoo chapter 17. Matthew 17. You know, this is a story of when the Messiah told Peter, James, and John, they said, come go with me. Y'all are part of my inner circle. I want y'all to see something that everybody ain't ready for yet. Come go with me. So when they went over there and the Messiah walked away from them, and when he walked away, look what it said happened right here. Verse number two. And he was transformed before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as the light. Now, we ain't talking about this artificial light in here. We not even talking about the sunlight, because Paul said it was brighter than the noonday sun. But he said his face shone brighter than the light. Now I want you to see something here. The word right there, transformed, I challenge you to look it up. You know what it's going to tell you? Metamorpho. And when, the, when he led me to this scripture and he told me to search that word right there, transformed, and I saw metamorpho, I said, that's why he gave me the word metamorphosis. To let me know. Messiah was metamorphosis right in front of his disciples. Can you even imagine that? Come on, man. And Peter and them standing there looking at that. They saw the one who they walked with, talked with, ate with, slept with, laughed and talked with. And he saw him go through the metamorphosis right in front of them until his natural face disappeared and the light appeared. His clothes lit up. And Peter went nuts. Peter went crazy. It's good that we're here. Woo! Hey, let's, let's build a house. One for him, one for him, one for him. Come on. He didn't know what to do. He was looking at Something from a normal self at an abnormal occurrence. He was looking at something from a natural self with an unnatural occurrence. He couldn't understand it. I wouldn't have been able to understand. I might have just passed out. <laughs> Pick me up after a while. I'm being honest. That's just kind of like too much. But they was able to see the transformation of the Messiah. Now, whatever, thank you, Father, hallelujah, whatever they saw, that's a promise to them. Now, y'all might catch that on the way home. I said, whatever they saw, that was a promise to them. What you saw me go through just then, y'all gonna go through that. Because I already then told y'all, you are the light. Huh? But how much do we?
tap into that. See, that's what I'm telling you. Come on, worms. We got to tap into the fact that the light is already in us. Watch this. Watch this. Thank you, Father. Your name is already in the book. What are you doing, brother? I'm trying to pump up a praise. <laughs> I mean, I said some stuff from heaven to tell you that the light is already in you. Your name is already written in the book. Your inheritance is amongst the saints. You are a child of the Most High right now. You don't know what you're going to be, but you know when you see him, you're going to see him as he is. He got another name for you written on a white rock. All of that is right now. Right now. Help me, Father. Help me, help me, help me, help me to finish this. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Woo! Praise his name. They say his garments was white as light. That's why the people come around here talking about the Shroud of Turin. I'm going to tell you something. If his light, because see, this, y'all got to help me. I got a little pea brain, but, but let's just hit me for a minute. See, when you look at the fact that he came into the tomb where his son was and called him up. So the light that was laying there that was extinguished, the father gave the light back to the light. And the light came through the shroud. I don't care if Turin burned down to the ground. It wouldn't have burned that shroud. Maybe y'all don't understand what I'm saying. The forever came through that shroud. So if the forever came through the shroud, the one who lives forever came through the shroud, the father brought him through the shroud, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fully convinced that nothing can hurt that shroud. It wouldn't have had no burn marks on it. My father raised his son up. That same son walked through a door. The metamorphosis was taking place. Y'all hear me now? I said the metamorphosis was taking place. When he got up, it started. But it wasn't complete yet. I'm going to show you something. Uh, let me see. Over here in John chapter 20. Yohan, I'm jumping a little bit, but I'm going to go back and get the mother scriptures I'm leaving behind. But I got to show you.